He was wearing an elf suit and he had a hat on and the big nose and the big ears and <laughs> it was so weird. It was the St. Cloud Hospital and I kind of remember that but it's just beats and pieces. But I saw this midget man and he told me that if I let my mom or brother die that I would wake up from this horrible dream. And I said no. On September 23, 2007, 20 year old dance instructor Stephanie Smith went over to her mother's house in Cold Spring, Minnesota for a home cooked hamburger. Within 10 days, she was having severe seizures. Doctors induced a coma to save her life. She emerged nine weeks later, paralyzed and brain damaged. And I hit people and I threw my stuff and I was just not myself. And I guess that's why they put me in the locked ward. They totally, it was just crazy. When I got home, things around the house looked fake. The ground looked fake. The trees looked fake. The small, the house looked small. Like it was just so weird. I couldn't fathom what was going on. Stephanie had hemolytic aremic syndrome a potentially life-threatening condition. She was among the most grievously injured of an estimated 940 people sickened in an E. coli 0157H7 bacterial outbreak traced back to a meat processing facility owned by food giant Cargill. Okay, we, we grow them. This is a pure culture of E. coli 0157. Mansur Samadpur's IEH Laboratories is one of the largest testers of ground beef. Each, each one of these uh, circles is a colony of E. coli 0157. There are millions of E. coli 0157 cells in each colony. I think that about 1 to 10 cells can infect one person. You can calculate how many people can get infected with just one of these tiny dots. E. coli occurs naturally in the bovine digestive tract and is present in fecal matter. The problem occurs when the bacteria gets onto the cow's hides on the way from the feedlot to the slaughterhouse or spills out from the cow's intestinal tract and gets onto the meat as it is cut from the carcass. The peril of E. coli infection emerged on the national scene 16 years ago when four children died and hundreds were sickened in an outbreak traced back to the fast food chain Jack in the Box. The government identified E. coli 0157H7 as the bacteria responsible for the outbreak and said that infected meat can't be sold to the public. The USDA left specific safety protocols to the private sector. For example, it encourages, but does not require, testing for E. coli. Slaughterhouses do some testing and take other precautions like washing the cattle or carcasses, but these efforts vary greatly plant to plant. Even those companies with more rigorous programs concede they cannot catch all the contamination. As an added precaution, the USDA has urged grinders to test ingredients when they arrive from slaughterhouses, but few do citing cost and concern from slaughterhouses about widespread recalls. Cases declined through the 90s, but in the past three years, they have surged significantly. Over 8,000 people were sickened in 16 outbreaks. Bill Marler's law practice handles the vast majority of food poisoning cases in the United States and represents Stephanie Smith. In any foodborne illness outbreak, there's a chain of distribution. It's not unusual for us to focus on sort of the last best chance to have prevented it. If I had enough evidence, I'd sue the slaughter facility. The last best chance that we can figure out we, where we know it came from is Cargill. Cargill, a major food producer, which declined to be interviewed for this story, said it is committed to continuous improvement. The New York Times acquired this handwritten log of the ingredients that went into the hamburger patty that Stephanie ate. As is typical for the industry at large, Cargill ground scraps of beef or trim, which are much cheaper than whole cuts, but particularly vulnerable to infection. Any one of these sources could have been responsible for the contamination that sickened Stephanie Smith. 38% of the hamburger was from Greater Omaha, 
one of the country's largest meatpacking plants. 37% was from Lone Star, a Texas slaughterhouse. 15% was from Uruguay, where meat is subjected to even less scrutiny than domestic supplies. 10% wasn't solid beef at all, but a meat derivative manufactured by Beef Products Incorporated. Cargill did not test the trim from these suppliers as it arrived at the Butler facility, but some companies like Costco believe testing incoming trim is essential. Costco owns a very large meat plant in Tracy, California, where we do nothing but grind meat. It has to come in on what's called a certificate of analysis, which means that the meat supplier has already tested it. Then when it gets to our plant, we test it again. We'll grind that meat and make ground beef, and then we want to test it before it leaves also. If it doesn't pass, we don't ship it. But even Costco's system, which all experts say is above and beyond the industry norm, has a vulnerability. Again, we're blending some lean meat with our trimmings and our ground beef from the Tracy meat plant. This is trimmings. That is, okay. From these flank steaks. And again, then we're blending these, these two items to make that fresh ground beef that you saw on the retail counter today. Despite rigorous testing at the Tracy Meat Facility, the trim that is blended with their ground beef comes from steaks that are not tested for pathogens by Costco. This is a process common in the grocery industry that potentially introduces contaminants after testing is completed. On June 30th, Costco recalled ground beef that had been mixed using trim from potentially contaminated steaks from the J.B. Swift Corporation. No illnesses have been linked to Costco meat, and while Costco is taking steps to rectify the problem, the recall highlights just how vulnerable the supply is to disease-causing microorganisms. I don't want anybody to think that this is at least from my opinion, the absolute 100% best. I don't believe in that. I think that we've always got lots of room for improvement. The origin of the outbreak that sickened Stephanie Smith, as well as most outbreaks, remains a mystery. But these cases highlight the ground beef industry's lack of transparency and the consequences of the federal government's willingness to defer control of safety protocols to the private sector. I just know I have to work at it and I have to get somewhere and put everything into it and I know I will. I know I'll be back to me, not to the old me because I guess I was a lot bitchier. <laughs> but I know I will walk in. I know I will dance. I won't be walking with a walker, I will be dancing. Cargill is paying for her therapy in advance of any legal claims, but her doctors believe that she will most likely spend the rest of her life in a wheelchair. I honest to God believe that they should be in jail. So I just, I hate them. I don't know how they can sleep at night. I ask myself every day, why me? And why from a hamburger? This is not fair. 